Hey, good morning, Grace Church. Welcome to, pardon my earthquake chicken there. Welcome to hashtag Grace 1010. I, uh, I'm glad I'm here with you this morning, and I hope that uh, you're doing well, that you're all safe and, and secure, and that uh, you don't have this illness that's going around, and you're doing your social distancing. So, hey, this morning I wanted to talk about Jesus. You know, it's it's Easter week, and uh, Jesus is the focus of our attention. I'm going to adjust my camera here for a second. Forgive me. There we go. That's better, I think. Um, you know, with Easter being right around the corner, it's like you you... Just, you know, that Jesus died on the cross, that he's in the tomb, and that on Sunday he's going to be resurrected. Hallelujah. But, uh, you know, why do we need Jesus? Sometimes I ask that question. And uh, as a new believer, I ask that question a lot. But I understand now. But, uh, you know, maybe some, some of you have questions. You know people that do have questions, you know. You know, the, when we started out, we had this big hole in our heart. You know, uh, rock singers sing about it, about uh, I've got an emptiness deep inside. And, and uh, you know, people try to fill that emptiness with money and uh, drugs and alcohol, sex. You know, Aristotle Onassis, you know, one of the richest men in the world said at the end of his life that uh, millions do not always add up to what a man needs out of life. And we know that, like Paul said, you know, no matter what condition he was in, he was content. God had given him that peace in his heart. <clears throat> and you know that he'll fill that hole in your heart. He has, if you know him. But, uh, you know, some people may not know him. And, and they ha everybody has that emptiness to start with. <clears throat> you know, God satisfies his hunger for and meaning for the purpose of life. You know, when, when we come to know Jesus, we understand our purpose in life, you know. Uh, he satisfies our hunger to live beyond this life. You know, uh, many people fear death, but they don't need to if they know Christ because they know that it's just a transition from this world to heaven, to the eternal life. <clears throat> and I'll tell you, that's going to be so good. Uh, he satisfies our hunger for forgiveness. You know, each of us has failed. Each of us has done wrong. Each of us has has sinned, no matter whether it's in thought or deed. And uh, Jesus satisfies that need to be forgiven. <clears throat> you know, why did Jesus come to die? Um, you know, he, in Mark it says, uh, he came to give his life as a ransom for many. And that many is you and me. And you realize that uh, without him, giving his life for us, um, the world would be a terrible place to live. We'd have no hope. You know, the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me, it, it was out of that love that he gave his life as a ransom for us. You know, in Galatians it talks about he gave his life for me and for you. You know, and he's going to give us freedom. Freedom from what, though? Freedom from fear. You know, God, uh, Jesus died on the cross, and that ransom price set us free, free from guilt. You know, when we sin, when we do something wrong, um, we know that uh, the wages of sin is death. But Jesus will forgive us. He, we, we have that freedom from guilt. Because we know if we actually repent and, and ask forgiveness, that God will give us that forgiveness. <clears throat> we have freedom from addiction, too. You know, and it could be any addiction. But uh, the human race, I believe, is uh, addicted to sin in, in just out of nature, you know, from Adam on. And uh, Jesus paid that price to forgive us of that sin. Jesus said that everyone who sins is a slave to sin. And I'll tell you that uh, there's no one here or in history that has ever not sinned except Jesus. 
And freedom from fear. You know, so many people worry about things. They uh, spend a lot of time just stressing about things and, and, uh, sorry. They stress about things and, and they just, uh, uh, are fearful of things. So we need to fear no longer. That's what it says in Hebrews, you know. Death is not the end of those who trust in Jesus. You know, death is just the beginning of eternal life. And also, we have freedom to know God. Think of that. The creator of the universe, we have an opportunity to know him personally on a one-to-one basis. Uh, Your iniquities have separated you from God. But if we pray and understand God's word, then... God will forgive us, and our separation will no longer be there. We'll be closer to God. We have freedom to love. You know, it says in John, in First John, that we love because He first loved us. And He took, and you know, looking at the cross and what He did on that cross shows God's love to us. It gives us an understanding of true love to sacrifice your life for a friend. And Jesus sacrificed his life for all of us. We have freedom to change, too. You know, God can give us, you know, people, some people will say, oh, he's just born that way, he's not going to change. But that's not true. I know when I accepted Jesus as my Lord and Savior, my life radically changed. And it's been uh, nothing I did. It was the Holy Spirit completely and utterly changed me. You know, and at this time, it's like people will come to church, and of course, we're going to have the church online, but people will still be there that don't normally come. So, you know, hopefully you'll have friends that you can share this with, uh, and uh, they'll understand that all they have to do is to come to Jesus and truly say, I'm sorry, please forgive me of my sins, and God will forgive you. And just tell him, you know, just thank God for everything that he's done. Thank him for your salvation. Thank him for the roof over your head, the car that you drive, the food that you eat. Um, You know, it's just everything that we have is his. And he just loaned it to us. So we're trying to do our best with with, uh, that and... At times it's difficult, but we can always go to God and we can always, you know, go to Jesus and pray and he will forgive us of those sins. You know, we need to thank him for dying on the cross and not just this time of year, but all year long. <clears throat> and then finally, we just say, please, you know, ask God to to accept that, to please give me that eternal life, that uh, that fill that hole with your spirit, Lord. And I swear that by all things holy that he will do that. And it doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter if you've been uh, backslidden. It doesn't matter if you're a brand new Christian. It matters that you're honest and faithful and true in what you say to God. And that when you say these things to him, say them sincerely without doubt, like it says in, in James so I hope uh, this morning, like I said, you're doing well. I hope that you get something out of the study this morning. Um, it's a beautiful day to be stuck in the house, but that's the way it goes. Anyways, um, I'm going to cut this short. I think I got maybe a minute left, but I don't want to run over. I appreciate everybody that's tuned in. And please share that uh, uh, you know oh, that friends will hear this and get to know to know this uh, message, to know the Savior and our Lord Jesus Christ. I thank you, I love you, and Jesus loves you too. I'll see you later. Well, earthquake.